Skinwalker. Some legends of monsters die along with the civilizations that perpetuate them, whereas others adapt to the changing times and survive, remaining alive and well to this day. The Skinwalker, one of the oldest entities from Navajo Native American mythology, embodies this enduring horror. The Navajo people, known for their privacy, have long hesitated to divulge information about Skinwalkers to the world. However, over time, certain chilling details have seeped out. According to Navajo legends, a skinwalker is a type of malevolent witch endowed with dark magic, capable of inflicting harm upon unsuspecting victims. Skinwalkers, it's believed, can be of any gender and possess the startling ability to shapeshift into animals. While there are several varieties of skinwalkers, the consensus is that they move on all fours and can only be killed using a knife smeared with white ash. For the longest time, Tales of skinwalkers remained confined within Navajo communities until they broke into mainstream consciousness in 1996. This shift occurred when a couple sold their 512-acre ranch after only 18 months of ownership. Now infamous as the Skinwalker Ranch, the property has been a hotbed of reported paranormal activities ever since. The profoundly unsettling incident that triggered the owner, Terry Sherman, to sell happened one night in 1996. Terry was walking his dogs when he encountered a wolf that boldly approached him, and he realized that it was perhaps three times the size of a typical wolf, with glowing red eyes. Alarmed by the beast, Terry shot it three times, only for it to remain standing. In the ensuing years, successive owners reported strange occurrences, including crop circles, unexplained cattle deaths, glowing orbs, and more. Paranormal investigators theorize that the beast Terry Sherman faced was likely a skinwalker. In recent times, skinwalkers have spread fear amongst millions of TikTok users. This wave began with a video shot by a man named John Soto while riding his horse along a dusty road. Soto, who believed he'd encountered a skinwalker on his property multiple times, aimed to provide conclusive video evidence. The footage features a spine-chilling voice echoing from a tree line, causing the horse to bolt. While the evidence is thin, John Soto maintains that, quote, I can just tell by the sounds of whatever's calling me out that it's not right, like it wants to do wrong to me. One thing remains clear amidst the uncertainty. The haunting legacy of the Skinwalkers lives on. Nymerigar. This is the infamous San Pedro Mountains mummy, a mysterious mummified figure discovered in the depths of Wyoming's San Pedro Mountains in 1932 when gold prospectors blasted into a hidden cavern. Nestled within the sealed tomb was a perfectly preserved 14-inch tall humanoid figure. Seated with a cross-legged posture, the mummified entity presented an intriguing and eerie image. Its diminutive stature, cranial deformities, and adult-like teeth prompted a wave of scientific and public curiosity. Initial radiological examination suggested it was not a child, but rather a fully mature adult, adding another layer of mystery. Connections were immediately drawn to a legend of the Native American Shoshone tribe, the Nymerigar. These mythical beings, believed to inhabit the same Wyoming mountain ranges, are described as diminutive warriors in Shoshone and other regional folklore. In traditional narratives, the Nymerigar were feared warriors, known for their aggressive behavior and use of poison-tipped arrows. While small in stature, they were reportedly fierce fighters, maintaining dominion over their territories with tenacity. The name Nymerigar literally translates to people eaters, and it is said that they particularly enjoyed children. The Nymerigar also committed acts of brutality against their own, and they would bash in the skulls of individual members of their tribe who were unable to contribute due to sickness or age. Interestingly, the mummy showed signs of having met a violent and traumatic end, with its spine damaged, skull smashed, and brains exposed. Also, its teeth were unnaturally viciously pointed. The San Pedro Mountains mummy appeared to confirm Native American tales of the Nymerigar. However, later analysis by the University of Wyoming revealed the San Pedro Mountains mummy to be more likely that of an individual infant who had suffered from a cranial deformity, 
giving it the appearance of a tiny but fully grown adult. The San Pedro Mountains mummy became known as Pedro and passed hands several times, at one point becoming a sideshow attraction, then being sold to a businessman who died in the 1980s. The mummy appears to have since disappeared, and its current location is unknown. Moon-Eyed People The forests and mountains of Appalachia have been home to various Native American tribes, perhaps most notably the Cherokee. How the Cherokee came to control this region, however, is a lesser-known story. Centuries-old fables tell of a mysterious race of nocturnal people with pale skin and large black eyes that live beneath the mountains. Unable to tolerate the sun, they roamed the Appalachian forests at night until the Cherokee expelled them in the late 18th century. Unlike other elements of Cherokee mythology, the Moon-Eyed People are unique to the physical evidence that seems to corroborate their existence. Archaeologists have uncovered stone structures, complex wall carvings, and strange underground chambers throughout the Appalachian region. These remnants, such as a mysterious 1,600-year-old, 855-foot-long rock wall at Fort Mountain, Georgia, have led to speculation that the Moon-Eyed People were proficient stonemasons, possibly crafting their homes in the mountainous terrain to accommodate their nocturnal existence. Arguably the most compelling of these archaeological discoveries is a soapstone statue found in Cherokee County, North Carolina. The statue, reportedly unearthed in the late 19th century, depicts a figure with notably large round eyes and a form that evokes European medieval styling. This statue has intensified speculation about the Moon-Eyed People's identities and origin. Among the theories, the Moon-Eyed People had been proposed to be a distinct group of Native Americans or an earlier indigenous civilization that had less tolerance to sunlight, perhaps due to albinism or a similar genetic trait. They might have inhabited the Appalachian region before the Cherokee migration from the Great Lakes area around the 13th century. Another theory involves ancient European explorers, possibly Celts, who could have reached the American continent long before Columbus. The intriguing similarities between the Moon-Eyed People's purported stone structures and ancient Celtic architecture fuel this speculation. In particular, the Welsh prince Madoc, an alleged transatlantic voyager in the 12th century, has been named as a potential link to these mysterious people. More fanciful hypotheses have even suggested extraterrestrial origins for the Moon-Eyed People, although such theories lack scientific support. Wendigo With an ashen complexion, deep-set eyes ablaze, and a hunched skeletal frame, the Wendigo truly embodies the essence of nightmares. Its perceived plausibility amplifies the terror it incites. Belonging to Algonquian Native American folklore, the Wendigo is a man-eating humanoid that is, according to some, close enough to a human in appearance that reports of them may in fact relate to forest-dwelling cannibalistic men who have turned feral. Legend suggests that the Wendigo's appetite for human flesh is insatiable. Regardless of its consumption, it remains eternally hungry, doomed to a perpetual hunt. Less credible variations of the Wendigo often feature antlers, decaying skin patches, and abnormally long tongues. Folklore dictates that Wendigos were once men who, after succumbing to cannibalism, often as a survival necessity, were transformed by evil spirits. Another iteration of the Wendigo origin story suggests the first of these creatures was a warrior who bartered his soul with the devil to rescue his tribe from warfare. His transformation into the grotesque Wendigo resulted in his tribe banishing him due to his frightening new form. Many continue to believe that Wendigos prowl the forests once inhabited by the Algonquin Native Americans. In recent history, numerous sightings have been reported, coming from both Native American communities and white settlers. Among these reports is the account of a Cree man, Jack Fiddler, who found himself on trial for the murder of a Cree woman in the early 1900s. Fiddler insisted she was in the throes of a Wendigo transformation and had to be eliminated. He even professed to have slain at least 13 other Wendigos during his lifetime. Whatever its origins, and whether or not it truly haunts the forests of Native American lands, the tight-skinned, emaciated, and cold-hearted Wendigo remains one of the most iconic creatures of legend. Kulupluit. The 
northerly Native American peoples, such as the Inuits, have a lore of their own, which is interwoven with the lifestyles, traditions, and landscapes which define their cultures. The monsters of Inuit lore, despite having been conceived in isolation, bear certain resemblances to those of other cultures, and yet are in many ways unique. For instance, the Kalupluit are described in age-old legends as being similar to mermaids, aquatic, scaled, and semi-humanoid. But these are certainly not the same siren-like beings that Western sailors have told tales of for centuries. The Kalupluit are described as reeking of sulfur, having slimy green scaled skin, long black hair and fingernails, webbed hands, and sharp protruding fins, while being generally feminine and wraith-like. Their behavior, however, is more terrifying. Known for luring children to the water's edge with a hypnotic humming, the Kalupluit are infamous for dragging them beneath the surface. Some say that the children are devoured and consumed, while others believe they are kept in a frozen state so that the Kalupluit can feed off their youth to maintain its own. Likely serving as a cautionary tale, the Kalupluit myth warns children to avoid dangerously icy coastlines and waters. One notable Kalupluit story shared among Inuit children recalls the tale of a starving woman and her grandson. Unable to feed the boy, she surrenders him to a Kalupluit, believing he would fare better. Later, once able to hunt again, an Inuit couple embarks on a journey to retrieve the boy. They discover him bound to the Kalupluit by a seaweed tether. By outwitting the creature, the couple rescue the boy and return home, a rare example of a Native American monster legend with a happy ending. Which of these terrifying creatures do you believe still exists? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.